Hello everyone, I'm Emanuele Biggi from Italy. I'm a macro photographer, a conservation photographer. And today I would like to bring you in my uh, personal approach to wide angle close up photography. Wide angle close up photography is something uh, different from macro wide angle photography that uh, how is normally called um, because normally actually uh, most of, most most of the time these uh, subjects are not really in macro. It's not a true macro. It's a one one ratio reproduction ratio. You normally stay a little bit less in in, in terms of magnif magnification but it's nonetheless a close-up photography of tiny subjects. So we will talk about this and I will try to give you some hints and some perspective on how I work with this technique and with different uh, gear or different uh, way of working with animals and, and plants and nature in general in this kind of photography. This is very important. I will also touch some ethics as well. So I, I try to convey you also the way I like to work. So let's start and let's start uh, with, a, of course, a, a short uh, a short presentation about uh, close-up photography, close-up wide-angle photography, uh, that is normally uh, a photography about showing the animal in its environment, the subject in its environment. This is very important uh, because uh, both the animal and the background are very important, more that, than in other photographies. For example, the classic macro uh, aims to show the animal in the best way possible, the classic, no, the classic macro, uh, with a blur background, uh, nice edges and so on. In this case, you want actually a landscape photography with the subject inside this landscape. Uh, this is another example of, of a tree frog calling from a water plant in Costa Rica. This is another classic example of wide angle macro photography of a tiny subject inside its environment. But it's not, not just about this. Uh, it's, there's a, there are something that you're, you must think about when you shoot wide angle close up photography. It's not just showing the subject in its environment and end of the story. It's much more. Uh, of course, uh, the first thing you have to evaluate is the subject and the surroundings, not just the subject as you normally do with, uh, of course, with a classic macro, for example. Um, this is very important. I show you this awful image uh, I shot uh, quite a few years ago, uh, a long time ago, of a grasshopper living in grasslands. And I wanted to show it in, in, it, in its environment, of course. But in this case, I missed a very important thing. Uh, I missed finding uh, a good balance between the subject and the background. Uh, so my best advice about this is to try to find different uh, planes uh, between the subject and the far background, the far point, the farthest point uh, uh, of the background. This is very important and I show you another image that could explain you um, a little better than, than, than in words what, what I'm saying. This is a cave salamander living in a small village in Italy. And in this case, as you can see, the, the, uh, you have different um, and progressively blurring background. You have the stone where the cave salamander is, the, the other stone on the upper left side of the image, and then you have the stairs of the small uh, path going into the village that that turn and go toward the uh, upper le upper right light on the upper right corner of the image. This is a well balanced to me at least. It's, it's a well balanced uh, wide angle close up photography uh, and wide uh, well balanced between the subject and the, and, the, and the background. This is another example I can show you of another similar. Um, situation. In this case, what I like is the uh, balance between the, the, the image and the background in terms of coloration, not just the planes, not just the different uh, layers between the in-focus subject and the background. There's also the aspect of the coloration that is 
very important to keep in mind. So th this is just two example to give to give you an hint about always thinking about the subject and its background, not just the subject as you can maybe do sometimes with different kind of photography. Uh, uh, a small ethical. Um, um, I would like to give you a small ethical uh, rule I always try to follow when I shoot this kind of photography and normally uh, animal photography. Whenever possible, shoot in situ. This is really important to me and I always try to do that whenever possible. And uh, this is something that grew in me uh, in the, in the, in, uh, uh, during the time. It's, it's not something that came to me earlier in my career, in my passion for photography, but uh, now I always try to photograph every animal, every plant without moving them too much. If I do, it's because I have the permission, I'm with a researcher, I'm with someone that has to move the animal because of uh, some needs uh, in research or conservation. But if I don't, uh, I try to avoid touching the animals, uh, moving them, stressing them and so on. And you can give uh, you can give a try because it's also very possible to get nice images even if you don't touch and move the animals and stuff like this. For example, take this image of a um, floating green toad <laughs> during breeding season with the, all the already deposited eggs in the background. I waited to get this image. I didn't uh, get this image as soon as I reach the pond, of course. I am, but it would have been even impossible to catch the frog, the toad, and put it in the right place uh, by my will. I just had to wait for this male to move around and reach his place, and then I was finally able to get this image. And uh, believe me, it's even more satisfying that moving the animal around and and search for the image on a constriction way so it's it's an advice that came from that come from my art as well from uh, from my no personal knowledge about nature um, I, I can give you more example about this. For example, in this case, it was even a venomous snake. So I always respect venomous snakes. I always, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm able to catch a snake and put it somewhere, but uh, it, it is less natural. And in this case, this uh, tree snake was just in the perfect position. It was standing there. I didn't move it. It was as you can see, he was right there without me doing anything to stress it, to catch it, to move it or something like this. So I got this wide angle close up image without uh, touching, even touching the animal with a, you know, with a hook or, or a snake handle. Uh, normally the animal, as you can see in this video, if you put the camera down and leave them alone for a while, they start moving again like they were uh, before you were there. So they will start eventually to move around and in this case to kick their relatives <laughs> um, during breeding season. So it's very easy after, it, it only takes patience. You have to be a little bit patient and you will eventually got your, get your results. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. So don't worry about not getting the proper result as soon as you get to the site. This is another example of me photographing in situ a um, fr freshwater crayfish in, in Italy. Uh, this is uh, just another example of how I approach the animal even in shallow water. In this case, I was using uh, underwater housing by Autex uh, that I always carry in my backpack. Uh, in other cases, I use, for example, the Lawa problems that can be put into the water at least on, on its first half. And uh, as you can see in this image, um, I always try to always try to find different ways to show the animal in its environment. So always think about, and this is another hint, another advice that I would like to give you today. Uh, the, the, always think about the 
perspective you are about to photograph with. Uh, this is very important. Always try to think about perspective. It's all about perspective. Uh, aside of background and subject, aside of uh, ethics, uh, once you are there, think about the, a different way to show the animal you're about to photograph. For example, I like uh, I like this image of a uh, wall spider uh, that I shoot in uh, southern Italy, and this is uh, actually not a, a wide angle close up in the classic way. You don't see the environment here, but uh, I use the problems to get this wide, uh, wide perspective um, portrait of the spider with all the legs framing the, the face of the spider. And I sort of like this different way to see such tiny subject uh, that in this case seem a much larger uh, subject. And this is something that I like. I normally try to get the subject that in, the, in a way that it seems bigger than it is in, in real life. And this is one of the other aims of this uh, technique. To, to show the subject in a different way, uh, not just inside its, envir in its environment. And uh, I can give you another example showing this, uh, three, um, these three mushrooms. These are three mushroom photographed in a, with a classic macro lens, of course. It, this was something like probably the 85 millimeters from Laua, the ultra macro uh, Laua 85 millimeters, um, but you know all the background is not is so blurry. They seems they even if it's a macro, they still seem tiny. And I wanted to show them as they were bigger than they were in in real in real life. So I tried uh, to put the problems, the Laua problems, and I got this shot where they actually seemed a little bit larger than they are. So it's all about perspective. It's all about it finding a different angle of view sometimes, like I did with this uh, upside down uh, skating, uh, water skating insect, Notonecta. Uh, this is another example. There's a video of me taking the photo using the Peri Problems by Lava. And this is an um, uh, upside down shot. Uh, and this is uh, the upside down. Sorry, uh, it's upside down standing insect, and so the final result is this one. And in such, in the funny things is, it, it, this is a shot that would have been impossible to do with a classic underwater housing because it, the, the water was so shallow and uh, the, the insect was so shy that if I would put the the, an underwater housing inside the water, I will scare it or I will touch rocks, so it would have been impossible to get such shot with a classic underwater housing. This, in this case, the peribro, the periprobe came to my help to to help me get this shot. Another very important thing that I would like to convey you today is the. Uh, the, the need of playing with light. So always try to play with light. Uh, use different uh, source, sources of light, for example. Uh, in this case, for example, I, I shot a classic wide-angle close-up photography of this mating tree frog couple with these eggs. Um, and then I, I, I decided to move the light. So the source of light was uh, actually uh, some flashes. And I put one flash behind the leaves they were on, and I got this shot that to me is more aesthetically a pleasant, a pleasing that uh, than the other one. Uh, another thing you can do is to use multiple light to uh, get the environment visible during the night. This gecko was lit by two flashes, two macro flashes on it, and the background has another flash that I pointed behind the gecko to have the background visible during the night hours when, when the geckos are active, uh, for example, in this case, in Madagascar. This is another example that is kind of 
it's it's more tricky but it's also use, useful when you are out uh, with just one or two flashes for the subject and no more flashes. In this case, I use the two flashes for two macro flashes for the subject, the chameleon on the foreground. And for the background, I used my torch light. So the, 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 the light you can see on the background was from my headlight, my headlamp. And I just had to raise the ISO rating a little bit. I put the headlamp, the, light, the headlight at the maximum power, and uh, I raised the ISO rating to 250 ISO instead of the classic 100. And I got this shot that is pleasant to me because you don't have the, you know, the classic dark background you will get without this, uh, this help from the headlamp. Uh, this is another example. Um, of using and playing, uh, of use, using different techniques and playing with light. In this case, in this particular case, uh, to get this dramatic shot of the hermit crab uh, with the rounded light uh, on it, I use this flash, this Godot MF12 flash, with uh, um, this snoot that Godox makes for these flashes. It's, a, it's actually this frame, you can put the, the snoot on it. And you also have a guiding light, as you can see, so you can, uh, you can see where the light will go, the light of the flash, of course, not just the LED light. And you can get really, really interesting and uh, interesting ways to uh, to show the subject to, to create an important light on it for example uh, this is another example of a red frog in the woodlands with this nuted light on it for example this is another uh, last example of the of a shrimp of a tadpole shrimp swimming in shallow waters I, this one is taken with a probe lens inside a very shallow pond uh, with the uh, with a snooted light from above and last but not least uh, i can put the flashes and the problems inside tiny holes sometimes uh, when i'm able to get uh, for example in this case uh, the, the the eggs of the tree frogs the tadpoles inside a shallow and tiny 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 uh, water pool of uh, inside a bamboo trunk so um Sometimes, uh, and we are at the end of my speech, sometimes uh, things get very small in this, in this world of uh, wide-angle close-up photography. The, the, the subject can be very, very tiny. So in this case, um, sometimes it, it's too small to, to get with, uh, even with the lower 15 millimeters that uh, reaches the the one to one ratio uh, sometimes the, the 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 bulkiness of the lens or the camera doesn't permit to get close as we want so sometimes you have to think about using different lenses like the 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 probe lens that is very narrow very thin and you can put it closer to the subject in some cases so uh, the last thing i will talk about today is uh, 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 sometimes the subject is very small and I mean very very small like this tiny chameleon this is the third smallest smallest species of chameleon of the world and I try to photograph this chameleon in its environment so I started uh, with the 15 millimeters from Lawa the macro uh, 15 millimeters and uh, yeah, I, 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 I was able to get it, but it was still not very visible and it had the perspective I didn't want. So, uh, yeah, sure, you can crop the image, but uh, you lose a lot of background in doing that. So I used a, built, uh, um, a lens that I, I built by myself using, uh, as a, using the 85mm Lawa Ultra Macro as a base lens of this setup, uh, adding a CCTV lens on the front. So this is the result I got from that uh do it yourself lens let's call like this um and this is uh, something like uh, something more more like i wanted uh, 
Uh, this is another example of a uh, uh, mushroom. I put the lens inside. You can see the setup I'm talking about. I use the 85 millimeters from Laua and uh, extension tubes and two Raynox lenses attached to a CCTV lens in the end, in the outer end of the on the lens. And the result are these ones. And this is a really a different perspective. Uh, if you if you are with me, you can see even a flying fly on the upper right corner of this image. And another fly, another example. So there are different ways to show the animals in its environment, even if they are very, very tiny, like this uh, mushroom and these flies in a mushroom. So closing with this uh, uh, tiny uh, dragonfly eating a mayfly, uh, I would like to remind you in the end of this speech that uh, nature is there for us to be uh, to be uh, photographed in, in a different way every day we go out every day we can find a subject that we didn't photograph in a in, in a in a in a classic way before so we can always try to get the different things to try different things even in in a well-known technique as wide-angle close-up photography yeah, always play with light, remember, with background, with the, the subject, with the lenses to get a different way to show the beauty of nature. So I hope you liked my speech and I hope you will find this short video useful for you. Uh, please uh, click uh, like if you like this video. Thanks Laua for inviting me once again to talk about my way of photography and bye.